Hi everybody, my name is Kira. I have put together a compilation. It will probably be two or maybe three videos because I have so many things to share with you guys of more corrective mobility type exercises. You can pick and choose from the list. I've got everything right here. You can pick and choose from the exercises and put together your own dynamic warm-ups. You can even treat all of these exercises as a full workout because they really get you moving. It's not just a typical warm-up stretch. So with that being said, you can hit pause, do more repetitions of any of the exercises. You can skip whatever you'd like. We're going to be getting our major joints like our shoulders, our spine, our hips, our knees, our ankles, everything is going to get moving, mobilized, and it's going to feel a lot better because I know probably like me, you're getting cabin fever being inside all the time. So I'm here to help you fight that. So let's get started where I am actually. So you're going to be in a wide butterfly, like a diamond pose. So this is too narrow. You want to really keep your feet out, press the soles of the feet together. Take your hands and hold on to your middle of the shin. From there, you're going to do cats and cows. So we do cat and cow usually on our hands and knees, but you're going to inhale, bring the shoulder blades down, maybe release the neck back a little bit, retracting your shoulder blades. They're coming closer together. That's the inhale through the nose. Exhale, curl your tailbone under you, round your back, like you're pressing into something behind you, looking into that diamond. Inhale, come back up. Exhale. So this is your cat. Inhale to cow. One more. Exhale to cat. Really widen those shoulder blades into protraction. Now pull them down and back towards each other into your cow. From there, arms out in a T, we're going to twist. Inhale, rotate, either grab your knee, shin, or thigh. I like to grab the knee, I'm a knee grabber here. And then fingertips on the floor behind you as you rotate. Let the right hip be absorbed into the floor. Let it be heavy so it's not going to pop up. And just twist back, look over your shoulder. Come back to center, twist to the other side, inhale, grow a little taller on the inhale, exhale, see if you can get a little more rotation, <sighs> exhaling through the mouth, inhaling through the nose here. I'm just going to do one more each side, a little faster, inhale, <sighs> exhale, a little more rotation, back to center, inhale. Exhale, can you get a little bit more, like a centimeter more rotation? Yes, you can. And then come back to center. Just curl over forward for a little stretch. To your feet. Just standing left and right foot about, you know, like a fist or two apart from each other. And then from there, I just want you to shift your weight into the left foot. Shift it into the right foot. Just sense where your body is right now. What are you feeling? Are you tense anywhere? Probably, I always am. Shift your weight into the front of the foot, now the back of the foot. You're still keeping the full foot grounded, but you're shifting where you're distributing the weight. So I'm in front of my ankle bone, I'm behind my ankle bone. And then just come to a place with a soft knee bend, close your eyes, and I want you to set an intention for your mobility practice today. So that can be whether you want to move with grace, with more strength and vigor, whether you want to focus on your breath work, just calming down, try to not let that mind wander like it tends to do. And then try to carry this intention through to the rest of your day, to all of your mindful practices, all of the people you encounter, all of the stresses you encounter, with that, softly open your eyes. We're gonna shrug our shoulders up and down, up and down. So this is called 
You can see my shoulders moving with this tank top, hopefully. So your arms are relaxed. They're super relaxed. You're just shrugging up and down. Usually we tell people, don't wear your shoulders like earrings. Keep them down and back. But sometimes it helps to feel the opposite. So we want to feel what we're not supposed to do so we can release that tension. Now we're going to do knee bends. Not a squat, just a subtle knee bend. No pressure on those knees here. As you bend the knees, you're going to shrug the shoulders up. As you straighten the, the knees, let your shoulders fall down heavy. Shrug and unshrug. Sorry for the dog barking. Indy, what are you doing? Shrug and unshrug. Shrug and unshrug. Let's do two more. Shrug and lengthen those legs. Last one, we're gonna add on. Shrug, unshrug, come to the balls of the feet, arms come overhead, thumbs touch, and down. Two more. Shrug, unshrug, balls of the feet, fingers touch, thumbs touch, and down. One more. Shrug, unshrug, come up and balance, stay here. We're going to do four or five, however many you want, semi-circles with the palms facing forwards. Practicing our balance. And then release. A little more to our standing warm up. I'm going to show you from the side. Feet are hip distance apart. Find your hips. They're not this wide. They're not going to be that wide on anybody. So keep it within your hips right here. Feet are planted on the ground. We're going to bend the knees softly. Arms come overhead. Do a Pilates roll down. Rolling over a gigantic beach ball. The weight is in front of your ankles here. You don't need to bend the knees. It just helps you to stretch into the lower back more. So then hang out at the bottom, bend the knees, straighten the back. This is called neutral spine and press up through the heels, glutes and hammies. Again, up, I'm gonna show you with straight legs. Weight tips forward into the foot, pull the belly up, let the rib cage fall over. Just hang here for a split second before you bend the knees and squat. Press back up, up. Option to bend the knees if your hamstrings are tight. Roll over that invisible beach ball. Roll, 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 roll. Straighten the knees if you can here. And then let the pelvis tip forward. Release that tailbone, press up. We're gonna reverse that. We're gonna come down into our squat. Straighten the legs, hang forwards. Slightly bend the knees and roll up one segment of the vertebrae at a time. Squat down, inhale, exhale, fall forwards, slightly bend the knees, and press up, ribs come, shoulders restock, head comes up last. So from there, our very last part of the standing warm-up, Indy, what are you doing? Do you want to join? Is for the hips. So we're going to work on deep acetabulum, that's the hip socket mobility. So put your left foot out for me, straight leg if you can. We're just going to rotate internal, external rotation. Really feeling that juicy movement in that socket. It might be really tight if you've been watching a lot of Netflix like I might or might not have been. So internal, external, internal, external. Windshield wiper legs. It's all coming from here. You're not letting your lower back move. You're keeping that core engaged. Bring it out to the side at a 45 degree angle on the diagonal. Indy, come on. What are you doing, Indy? Indy, let's move out of the frame, okay? Let's move over there. So twisting into internal and external rotation. Now bring it behind you, not too far. If you bring it too far behind you, you're going to dip into your low back and that's gonna be a lot of unneeded tension in the lower back. So just twisting, internal, external, switching sides. I forgot to do this on the other side, but you can start with a little ankle mobilization, rolling the ankle left and right. Just go back and do it real quick. Roll the ankle. Roll, roll, roll your ankle gently down the stream. I don't know what I am singing right now, but rolling, rolling, rolling. And then come back, we're gonna do this internal to external hip stirs. I call it stirring the hip. Left and right, internal to external. So, as you're doing these, go to the side now. Think about all of the neur neural receptors, they're called neuroreceptors in your hip socket. 
and they give you information that goes to your brain that tells you it's safe to move your hip, it's safe for movement. So those neuroreceptors are sensing movement at the deep hip socket, priming your body for more movement, telling the brain it's okay to move. So this is really good for your joints to do these mobilizations. Might look like nothing, but you'll feel it. I lied, very last one of the standing mobilizations. So you're going to be doing Pilates, not Pilates footwork. So feet about hip distance apart again. We're gonna come down into a little knee bend. Imagine there's a wall you're sliding on behind you. Keep your back in a neutral spine. That just means the natural curvature of your back. So you're going to come down into a knee bend. Elevate the heels on the ball of the feet. Press up and then lower. Let's do that again. Down, balls of the feet. Press up and lower. Down, balls of the feet. Press up and lower. Two more. Down, balls of the feet. Press up and lower. Really keep your core engaged and lower. Reverse that onto the balls of the feet. Lower, heels down and up. Balls of the feet. Knee bend, lower the heels and up. Two more, balls of the feet. Knee bend, lower and up. Last one, balls of the feet. Knee bend, lower and up. We're gonna just take it into a wide second. If you have done ballet, you know your first position, second position, yada yada. So we're gonna step into second position, turn up. Same combination. We're gonna squat, up. Up again, lower, squat, balls. Elevate, down, squat, elevate, up, down, squat, up, and down. Reverse, balls of the feet. Knee bend, heels down, come up. Balls of the feet, knee bend, heels down. One more. World's greatest stretch, guys. You're gonna start back at the back of your mat. Do that Pilates roll down, weight in front of your ankles, let everything fall. Walk your hands out on an exhale into a solid plank. Shoulders are over wrists, wrists are under the shoulders, feet. Balls of the feet on the ground, no booties in the air, no sagging backs or booties. So tuck your glutes under you. Bring that core on. Make that spine sandwich. Front of the core is firing, your back is firing. Everything is good. If your neck tends to crane, drop it down. So it's a long neck in line with your spine. From there, you're going to bring the left foot up outside of your left hand. Really deep runner stretch. Lift the left arm to the sky. Look at that left hand. Can you really press into that thoracic reach, that rotation? Feels marvelous. From there, bring the hand to the outside of the left foot. Heel down on the right leg. Press it into a triangle hamstring stretch. We're stretching all right here. Try to press your weight a little more into the front leg. It's a little, little minutia to the stretch, but press the weight into the front leg and you'll feel your hips are squaring off towards the floor. Imagine each hip bone is a headlight shining down to your mat. From there, bring it back to your plank. Strong plank, right foot comes up, reach up to the sky. You've got it, guys. Really reach, opening up that left hip, anterior hip socket. From there, hand comes to the outside of the right hand, press it into a triangle and then really shift that weight into the right foot, heel down on the left foot. So I don't want you to be up here. See how I'm opening my hips? I want you to close your hips, close them right here. Okay, bring that leg back a little faster for our last two. We're just doing two sets of this. Stretch it back, bring it down. Plank, other side, reach to the sky. Press it into the hamstring stretch. I forgot to mention, when you're doing a hamstring stretch, try not to round over. Try to keep yourself as flat of a back as possible. So you can even hold onto your shin if you don't fall over. Or you can be here. Or I have to do finger pads on the ground. So when you have a flat back, you stretch more into the hamstrings versus a rounded back stretches more into, what do you know? The back, right there. So bring it back to plank, we're gonna add on. 
So next one, bring your left, left leg up, reach your left arm in front of you. Let it be semi-circling back. The back of the hand touches your shoulder. We call this HBB, hand behind back. And then reach back overhead. Let's do three of those. Let it rotate. Hand behind back. Let's do one more. And then from here, pivot onto the outside, the lateral blade of your foot, lateral blade of the other foot, and reach back. This is a little awkward at first. It's called a lizard stretch. Really getting into that side body right here, into your IT band, and come back. Let's do the other side. Bring the right leg up, reach forward, palm is facing you guys right here. So you're going to reach back, let the arm rotate at the shoulder, hand behind back. Keep it in line with your shoulder as you bring it back. You're just semi-circling that right arm from overhead to behind your back one more time, guys. Let it rotate, palm up, palm down. Nice, reach in front of you, kind of pivot onto the outside blade of your foot, let that arm semi-circle. So the pinky is touching your thigh from the outside of both feet. You're not going into that shrugging here at the shoulder. You're pressing up, you're pressing up nice and strong, and then you're coming back. Nice, I'm only gonna do one of each of those. You can do more if you'd like and hit pause. Bring it down to a quick little child's pose. Bum over your heels, reaching forwards with your finger pads. You can even be on them like this. Whew, good stretch. You also can do puppy pose on your knees, knees above hips, reaching forwards. You'll get a really good stretch on that spine. Some shoulder retraction, all glorious. Feels wonderful. So that's your rest pose. Okay, here we've got our lunge sequence. The first one is straight from a PT clinic that I did an internship at. You're going to have one foot in front. Imagine there is this line, a line painted along your mat or your carpet. And that's your midline. You want to be as close as possible, like heel to heel on that midline to work on your balance. If you step out, it'll just be a little easier. You can start out here. Try to end up here eventually. 90, 90 degrees. Arms out to the side, goal post the arms, 90 degrees. We're going to inhale and twist to the left. Trying not to fall over, trying not to wobble from your pelvis. Go to the other side on the exhale. So left and right is one repetition, if you're counting them. I'm just gonna do a few more here before switching legs. Switch legs. So it's like that proposal. You've got a ring, you're proposing to somebody, and nope, you're doing a stretch. No time for proposals. You can also be on the ball of the foot if you want a little more support. That will help. So here, we are twisting, exhaling. Let that breath help you move. Inhaling, exhaling. One more, inhale, exhale. To make this a little harder, you're going to come into an elevated lunge right here. Hands at center, and then you're gonna twist here. This is gonna be a little harder, so you might need to step your foot out, heel toe it out a little bit. Twisting side to side. Don't neglect that other side. So hovering that knee into a split squat rotation is going to be a lot harder, a little more of a burn and a workout than purely Rotation from the thoracic spine. Okay, next we're going to be doing inchworms and then squat and then deep eight sits. These are wonderful. Inchworms, I love inchworms. Start at the back of your mat, walk your hands into that wonderful, oh so wonderful plank. Now you're gonna shimmy your feet up, butt in the air, stop about a foot from your hands, lift that left foot, square the hips off. This is opening the hips. Remember those headlights, square them off. Lift to the right. Hop or walk your feet back. Inch warm up. Lift to the left. And lift to the right. And walk or hop it back. 
Let's just only do one more right now. Walk it up, lift the left, and lift the right, and hop or walk it back. And let's walk up. Squats with Y arms. So feet are shoulder distance apart, little external rotation. Just like earlier, external rotation at the hip, make it come from the hip. From there, arms in a Y, relaxing those shoulders. Remember that shrugging, unshrugging? We are unshrugging here, okay? Squat, hips come behind you. Press up through the heels. Glutes fire, core is engaged the whole time. Just about 10 of these. Notice where your knee is. Where is it hanging out? Is it tracking about over the second toe, first or second toe? That would be good. We don't want them here. We don't want them out here. We want them right here to protect your knee. You can modify by doing this with your arms down. You can modify by doing more of a knee bend instead of going super deep. Not everybody can get down here, which we're gonna do in the next exercise. So be aware of what your body can do today, okay? Don't push your limits. The next exercise comes after these squats. You come down, make a prayer palm, put your elbows on the inside of your knees like this, on the thigh, I should say, and just shift your weight left and right. See my feet? Just notice what they're doing. I'm releasing one heel, pressing onto the ball of the foot, really opening those hips. We're going to keep that prayer palm, release the left arm, release, I mean the right arm, I should say. Look to the sky, other side. Release the left arm. Feels so good on the shoulders. One more time. So I call this the deep ape position. It's from Animal Flow. Thanks to Francesca Martinez, I was introduced to a lot of cool animal flow mobility practices. Check out her YouTube and Instagram. She has a website too, francescafit.com. So she does something called the deep ape sit. It's really good for your shoulders. You're going to internally rotate. Back of the hands face each other. Kind of round that back like we did earlier, really rounding through the lower back and the shoulders widen reach forward. Here's your sleeping ape. Sleeping ape. Now you're going to rise to the balls of the feet. Externally rotate the shoulders, come out in a T. Really reaching left and right. That's your awakened ape. Here we come back to sleeping. Snooze a little bit. Heels are down. <sighs> Open up those hips. Externally rotate at the shoulders, at the hips. One more. I know this is intense. Kids, Tend to be really good at this one because they're super flexible gumbies. Last one. Be careful coming up. We're going to do squat stretch. Modify would be just do a little knee bend. Head comes above bum, bum comes above head. Head and bum. Harder would be come down to that deep ape and come up, holding onto the toes. That's called our squat stretch. Flat back, rounded back, head above bum, bum above head. Roll up, get that Pilates roll up, shake it out, do a few shoulder circles, both directiones. 